Live from Brooklyn, New York, this is Stay Busy with Armand Sadler. Well, you know that I'm the guy, I'm out here living life, I'm busy. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another edition of Stay Busy with Armand Sadler, where we have responsible discussions on the entertainment business and the entertainment culture. I know it's been a minute. I hope y'all missed me. I, I, all the messages, all the where y'all going to be at, it means a lot for a podcaster. So I'm happy to say that we're back. I will never be away from you all this long again. Of course, I am Armand, founder of BNB. The only man to sit in front of Taylor Rooks and not tell a lie. Um, cho- uh, vegan chorizo poppy. All that good stuff. Again, so thrilled to be back. I want to shout out all the listeners tapping in for season five. We're on the fifth season of this podcast. I remember when we were just a young, young whippersnappers out in New Jersey at Cerebral Sound Studio. Shout out to my guy, John Cerebral Sounds. But we're here now, actually in familiar territory for those who are watching in season two, Brooklyn Podcasting Studio. My God, Josh, shout out to them. Love it here. Feel like home here. Um, Make sure you all subscribe to the YouTube channel uh, for all visual episodes, YouTube shorts, all that good stuff. Like, comment, share. Uh, There's also the audio, of course, on all your uh, available or favorite platforms, so you can leave a rating there wherever you can. Patreon, of course, the podcast only fans. Make sure that you hit the link in our bio to stay tapped in to exclusive content with the busy gang. I can't promise that you'll see feet, um, but you will see some very unhinged, unfiltered content that we all have coming for you. Actually, after this episode, um, me and someone that you'll get to know very soon are dropping a very long, uh, but very in-depth and fun discussion for you all that I think you'll enjoy. And of course, got a shout out the team still with us. Uh, He hasn't gotten tired of me yet, so I appreciate him. VP of everything, Kieran Hurley. We got our new team member, Zara, in the building. Shout out to Zara. All that she is bringing to the team, holding it down. Um, she and I actually worked together back in the day, much like, again, someone that you're going to get to know soon. So it's just funny how all these full circle moments just come together. But I keep alluding to people that you're going to get to know. And so I got to jump into that. So this first person is actually someone who, if you've been watching the show, you've seen her before. She came through for season three. Bad and Busy Month, our Women's History Month tributes. And um, I, just, I just really appreciate her. Um, as much needed woman's perspective on this show, I always wanted a woman co-host to join us. And I think that, I, I think that I've nailed it here. So I um, had the pleasure of working with her at The Source in the summer of 2017. We were both grinding. <laughs> we, we, have, we have war stories about that experience. But uh, we have both leveled up since then. She's forged her own path with 2Bs TV, interviewing a bunch of your favorite entertainers. Currently holding it down at BET. You can find her work on Revolt. You can find her work everywhere. The highly opinionated, often imitated, never duplicated Miss 2Bs. Welcome, Miss 2Bs. Thank you. That was a warm welcome. Make that. 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 How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. Thank you for asking. 2017 is a long time ago. You said that. Like, damn. That's too present. I'm auntie. Yeah, yeah, we old, we old. But hey, we're here. We are getting better with time. So very excited to have you. Can't wait to let the people get to know you more. But we are a trio. I got to I gotta introduce y'all to my guy here, someone who I respect very much. Met him a few years ago uh, at a random bar <laughs> when, when Trev was in town. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Trevor Trout, mm-hmm. randomly in town, brings him along. I'm like, oh, this guy's kind of cool. Follow each other on social media. I see that he's doing dope stuff like Animal House, lit parties in New York with Third Shift NYC. You might have bothered him to try to get on one of his Apple Music playlists where he does playlisting. Um, You might have seen him go viral for spotlighting upcoming artists. That's one thing that I love that he does. He's constantly trying to figure out who's next and is willing to just be like, yo, I fuck with this. I'm going to co-sign this. And reminding us the power of Twitter uh, when it comes to music, the power of word of mouth as well. and he is managing the guy who is the reason you all been hitting the ski for the last few months. 
um, which you'll probably see me hit at some point throughout this season. I, I've been practicing. <laughs> my my, my rim ski's getting pretty good. Um, but I, what I really appreciate about this guy, he's just a very big thinker. Like, there's not a lot of people who can think beneath the surface. Um, and this guy's always being like, okay, there's this thing, but like, what's the reason for this? And like, what does this mean for the future? And I just, I just love that. We may not always agree this season, but I, 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 I love that he's willing to take it there because I think we're all willing to take it there too. None other than Mr. Are You Sure, Will Foster. <laughs> Yo, thank you. That was good. Mr. Hey, Are man. You Sure. Hey, thank man. you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm excited to be a part of this. Um, I've seen Armand's work for a long time, man. Stay busy. I love the branding. I love the people that is involved. I'm excited for this season, man. It's good to have you, bro. It's good to have you. Wait, what's the are you sure? <laughs> because, so listen, it'd be, it be, it be a lot of times situations, especially like, you know, on comments, on Twitter, or just people, there's people that work, that don't work in these industries that mm -hmm. try to tell us about our industries Correct. and be like, um, oh, this will never happen. I'm like, or, I'd be asking people, are you sure? <laughs> because it usually ends up happening. Yeah. Like, um... You know, we can go, me and me and, me and Armand, Armand are in a chat with a lot of people that, you know, they said Ice Spice would be doing, she, she would be selling feet pics by six months. And I said, are you sure? Well, and they, they that, 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 mm -hmm. didn't, that didn't happen. So like, that's just one example. But yeah. I just ask people a lot of times, are they sure? Yeah. Yeah, that's his that's that's his catchphrase. So, <laughs> are you sure? Okay, copy. Uh, so this is my team now. Very excited mm -hmm. to have y'all. Just a lot of different stuff coming for you as as you saw through social media. New logos, new graphics, just new stuff, new segments, just new everything. New is always better. Like my guy Barney Stinson and How I Met Your Mother said, and I stand by that. So happy to have y'all here. And of course, before we get into the good stuff, we got to do the whether you like segment. So whether you like. Jalen Brunson or Tyrese Halliburton, dating apps or meeting in person, Madison Square Garden or Barclays, and playing mm. casino games or making money through parlays. So, Jalen Brunson, Tyrese Halliburton. What, what, what we got? Jalen. Because he's on the Knicks? Yes. <laughs> you know, I had to Google it right before I did this, so... That's who I choose for New Yorker. I respect it. I respect it. I'm taking, I'm taking my bad. I'm taking, I'm taking Brunson, man. He uh if he embodied the city and the city embodied him yeah. in so much, so many different ways this year. Yeah. And it's unfortunate that, that like, you know, the season kind of ended the way it did. Yeah. But it was it's, what he did was what he did for New York in like this season. Just it was special. Yeah, it was absolutely. special. Oh, so I chose right. Yeah, yeah you did. Oh, you right. did. You did. Right. Yeah, yeah. No, as, as, as fun as it is for me to hate on the Knicks, I couldn't hate on Jalen. Yeah, it's like he's, he's just he's great. He's great. Like mm -hmm. easily the mm -hmm. most exciting Knicks since yeah. Mello. Facts. And t took them. Well, they got knocked out second round, so he didn't take them further than Mello. But I think he will <laughs> take them further than Mello when they're all healthy. Um, now dating apps. Or meeting in person. It's a pretty easy one for me. But in person. Yeah. In person. Yeah. Hinge, Tinder, all that. It's it's never been. It's never been for me. It's just weird. Yeah. And as a woman, it just alludes that I'm ready to fuck mm. like, immediately. And that is the vibe that, that yeah. those apps do give off. <laughs> I was like, no, thank you. <laughs> I respect that. Uh the legendary Madison Square Garden or the newer but popular Barclays Center? MSG. M yeah, MSG easily. Mm -hmm. MS. A side note: MSG has some of the best popcorn I ever tasted in my it goddamn does. life. I don't think I've had their popcorn. Bro, you gotta, it does. bro, you gotta okay. try their popcorn. It's like, <laughs> it's like God popped it <laughs> and just like threw down bags from heaven. Like, <laughs> the, the popcorn is so good, bro. I swear to God, the popcorn is amazing, y'all. Y'all gotta try it whenever y'all get a chance. Go. I have to tap in, but uh, yeah, I would go MSG as well. I've been in sweets in both, um, which they're both nice, but. I was at the, the Nicki Minaj concert. I forget the name of the suite that I was in, but they had these, uh, what was it called? Portuguese uh, English muffin burgers. Okay. And they were, it's one of the best burgers I've ever had in my life. Like, you still it, think about it. it yeah, it, it didn't even need cheese. Like, it, it was that good, it didn't need cheese. Because me, wow. I can't eat a burger without cheese. Like, I, I personally yeah. always need cheese. But there was no cheese in that joint. It was flavorful. It was, it was damn good. So, uh, MSG for that. And, just, I think the vibe, just like the aura of being in MSG, like 
special. Whether you're going there for a concert or a sporting event, like mm-hmm. you say you go to MSG, someone's like, oh shit. You know, you say you go to Barclays, it's like, oh, that's cool. But yeah. Barclays is nice. I'm, I don't want to hate on Barclays. Like, it's nice. And a lot of people hate on Barclays. I but. witnessed what it did to Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Like, There's that too. Yeah. Fucking hove. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I witnessed what it did. So I'm just like, mm mm. But I do like going to Barclays. Yeah. It's closer to me, it's right on Flatbush. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, it I'm, is nice too. It's like it's not. It's it not, is. It's not a bad. Yeah, no, it's, it's not, not a bad thing. We just have MSG here too. Yeah, right. Which yeah. is <laughs> the food in Barclays. Like in the sweets is good. The the, the like normal people food. No offense, y'all. It's it's just not that great. Yes, yeah, it's, 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 it's not. It's not. So you gotta go in the lounge. I've never been to the lounge. Yeah, I have some motion. Yeah, no. I, uh, <laughs> emotion got emotion. My fault, man. sis. My fault. <laughs> you got to have some motion. Hey, I saw somewhere yeah. my homegirl will be going to the Liberty Games. They be having spicy rigatoni up in the lounge. Yeah, exactly. I, I That's that. what I'm telling you. I need that. No, I need that. definitely oh, need crazy. that. I need yeah. that. I need that. Because I've, I've, okay. I've been meaning to go to Carbone to try this spicy rigatoni. So I think I just have it in my mind. Like, yeah. I need some spicy rigatoni somewhere. <laughs> um, this one is purely f- uh, coming from my... Uh, gambling de- degenerate heart, but uh, <laughs> casino games or parlays. <laughs> Something seems more sophisticated about parlays. Okay, like casino okay. gives like you got a problem. Mm. <laughs> you no, know? are we talking about okay? Just like at the, like every cause every game at the casino type it like it's a casino games or yeah. just parlays. Yeah, just general. <laughs> That's a tough one, bro. I really don't bet on sports. Mm-hmm. So I remember, I, I remember we had this talk. <laughs> I would I probably do cons- casino games. I just uh, I feel like once you cross that pass of betting on sports, like you become you become a whole different sports fan. Like, I am, yeah. even, like, I'm definitely in a toxic relationship with FanDuel. It's kind of sure. it's kind of crazy, bro. I've seen a lot of people like crash out. Just yeah, like, but you know, to each his own. But I get it though. I mm-hmm. witnessed someone win thirty k. Yeah, yeah facts. No, it, gets, like, it gets yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah, it can get crazy. <laughs> and you and you chase that high of that big parlay that hits every time. And I'm Ooh. still I'm still chasing it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's running away from me. But yeah, I, I'd probably go parlay just because like I, I play them on my phone, like so people don't gotta see that I'm a degenerate with betting. Whereas if <laughs> it, it, if I'm in a casino and someone sees me there, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like they might be like, "Yo, this nigga's really far gone." Like, like, like look at him pulling the slot thing. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm look at him. So, he can't the stop. <laughs> He's been there uh, for twelve hours. <laughs> right, right, right. Let's get into this chat. There's um. Some timely things that um, have occurred. Uh, so Apple Music put out the 100 best albums list, and that caused a lot of controversy. I'll clear it up right now, and correct me if I'm wrong, Will. You had nothing to do with that list. Okay, cool. Nothing. Are you sure? I'm 100%. I'm 100%. <laughs> okay. I checked my email about 10 times to see if I got an email about this. Or I, check, I checked my text messages. I, typed in, I, I, I made sure that no one hit me from... From um from Apple asking yeah. me asking my opinion on it so no thank yeah because there's is, there's I'm a not. couple like Apple figureheads like low key and like mm-hmm. people immediately assumed like yo what's up with this list they're like yo I had nothing to do with it like you know they, they gave out a criteria they showed videos with certain people who they had um going yeah, through it fact. but I think the biggest topics of contention from the list was that uh, miseducation of Lauren Hill was number one. Uh, Frank Ocean Blonde was number either number five or number seven, I believe. I want to say it number was, five. Definitely top ten. Yes, it was number five. And people were upset about Kendrick Lamar, Good Kid, Mad City, essentially being uh, considered the greatest rap album of all time since that was number seven and there was no true rap album ahead of it. So, <laughs> list season, opinions, arguments, like... It really doesn't matter. We kind of know what these things are done for. I do applaud Apple for going through the process of ranking 100 albums right. because most people stick to a top five, a top 10, maybe a top 25. So doing 100 and it, it encompassing all music, commendable. You're not going to please everyone. So I'm, I'm not going to really give them shit for it. But uh, Frank Ocean's Blonde being number five was pretty egregious to me. And Good Kid, Mad City being considered the greatest rap album of all time by being the highest ranked rap album was also pretty crazy to me. What are y'all feelings on that? Um, like you said, we know what these are made for. Yeah. Like, um, Thriller came after Miseducation of Lauren Hill. And I'm just like, who made this list? Mm-hmm. Like, do you have an idea at all? Like, do we even know? Like, is there an editorial team? Like, I feel like they just want to promote the albums that they got like partnerships with. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I. I. I'm sorry. I have. I have no idea who 
who was involved with it. Or who, <laughs> I mean, or, Will, who or, did it? Or who, or who <laughs> if he did anything to it. I'm not, and I don't want to like, you know what I'm saying? If I did, I, I don't know if I would even tell people, but right. okay, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Right, probably off tomorrow. camera. Like, off, like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, um, yeah, man, I, the top 100 album thing is, is very, it's very, um, I wouldn't say, I'm trying to, I was about to say divisive, but it's not divisive. It's just, it creates conversation, like you were saying, and yeah. it does what it, it does. What it does. Um, some of the album rankings, yeah, I know, I know people get thrown off. The, I think the miseducation of, like, Lauryn Hill, like, that album and how polarizing it is mm -hmm. to almost everybody but anybody born before like what we'll, we'll say like like even 2000 or like 2002 or 2005 like, right like your everybody's parents was listening to that or even spun it yeah um the message and some of the stuff that she's she's saying there is so crazy and so and so next level of what or what people were hearing at the time it it, it had a lasting impact yeah. i do think somebody did say to me though one of the things that was interesting to me. He said a lot of stuff that she was talking about the album, she didn't really like live through, mm. and a lot of stuff that she was preaching and 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 and, 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 and singing about and, and you know making music about. She it kind of I don't know fell by the wayside in her own personal journey, which is who is that to judge? Right. We're not people to judge that. What's the same um, thing I to do? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So like, yeah. I'm just I'm just trying to see both sides of how why people why people people it's such reaction when people. See number uh Lauren Hill be number one. Yeah, Thriller, I, I, I think that's so before Thriller? interesting. Yeah, I mean, that, yeah, I think that's really yeah, what it is because <sighs> Thriller is like Michael was out for war. Well, mm -hmm. when she dropped course, that album. I think I I think they I I think they did that because everybody knows how good Thriller is. Right, right. right. I feel like everybody like I think everybody knows what Thriller is. It's, it, it really is the is the pinnacle of popular music. All right. So Correct. it should, it should, in my eyes, it should have been number one. I, I, I think maybe, I think maybe they were trying to do some shit like, yeah, like, oh, well, everybody knows this should be number one. But we're going to do something different. And that's. <laughs> Someone said <laughs> they guess. gave her number one so she could go to the dinner. <laughs> 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 you see what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I, I do see? recall seeing that. Yeah, see? I was like, "What?" Yeah. Michael Jackson unfortunately can't come to a dinner right now, uh -huh. so so I get it. <laughs> this is this is sensible, but uh. Yeah, I mean, songs in the, in the key of life, Stevie Wonder. That I wouldn't be mad at that being number one. Mm -hmm. um, what, what it's was, also uh, the description that they gave. Like they're like, oh, like let me find it. The rap album thing really throws me off because in in, in, in my eyes and how I personally feel, IMO or whatever, in my own opinion, I think the best rap will album I've ever heard, like hip hop album I heard ever heard, like top to bottom in my life being alive so far is my twisted dark beautiful fantasy by mm. Like I think that should be that was the pinnacle of mm. of the moment of it all came together for like it all came together for Kanye on that, I feel like. Yeah. Even like Runaway and like the the short film he dropped and everything. I just feel like that that was the pinnacle of of hip hop or rap albums in, in my life yeah you know our generation would yeah. say that yeah. you yeah. know like mm -hmm. if someone in their 40s would say it's like reasonable doubt or mm -hmm. illmatic you mm -hmm. feel me but yeah. mm -hmm. apple described death. the list as a love letter to the records that have shaped the world music lovers live and listen in did miseducation of lauren hill do that <laughs> like did it shape the world of music i don't know it's a little tough for me to speak on, just because it came out in '98. Yeah, so like, right. yeah. I, was, I was three. Yeah, like so, I, so. you don't know. I, it took me really some time know. to get to it. Yeah, uh, I, I can never understand, you know, its impact in real time. It's it's only like anecdotes from people. It's, it's an, a, definitely an amazing album, um, and I think Lauren just in general gets a lot of flack because of the person that she is. Yeah, her very mm -hmm. limited discography, literally one album. Like I feel like as time has passed, uh, on and on, like. I feel like she was really revered and she still is, but now people are like, you only dropped one album. Like, we can't consider you the greatest. We can't, you know, all this praise that she gets. Like, I feel like people are trying to revise that. So she's very, she has a very like, <clears throat> she has a very like mystic type of feel to her. Yeah. Like, yes. Like, like, is she like a, is she a witch? Like, is she, like, <laughs> she, like she only moves in shadows and like yeah. pops out and this and that. So, but yeah. like, 
it, but you low key can do that when you drop one of the best albums or best pieces of music in the human history. Yeah. So it's like, regardless if it was number one or not, I don't think I, I personally don't think it's number one, but it is up there. It yeah, is, it's on the it list. Is, it's one of yeah. those. It's one of those like, oh, you sat down and made this like. Mm-hmm. I think how old was she? What did she say? She was like twenty two when she made that, or something. She was young. She was yeah. young. Like, are you like, are you crazy? Yeah. Like, wow, wow. So you know, give her her props, but it doesn't have to be number one. But you know, yeah, you still appreciate it for sure. There were some other glaring omissions: Mariah Carey, oh Whitney goodness. Houston, Usher, Alicia Keys. Alicia Keys. Usher Confessions was in the eighties. Um, Im- Get Richard Patient. Die Trying was pretty low. Imagine the patient of Mimi didn't make it. Didn't make it. No. Didn't make it. That's why I'm like, who made the list? Like, we you belong, can tell. We Belong Together is the, great, the greatest R&B song ever made. Yeah, it's definitely up there. I, I'm going to say. It's definitely, it's like top five all time for sure. Top wow. Five, top five. I didn't yeah. know. My goodness. Yeah, yeah, Jermaine Dupri put a tweet out. He said the, the list was, dis- was disrespectful to R&B. Um, and people were, some people agreed with him. Some people didn't. Because there, there is reputation, representation from R&B there, but. I don't think you can leave off Whitney Houston and Mariah Carey. Like that just you just can. doesn't make sense to me. Doesn't make no doesn't, doesn't make, make no sense. damn Especially, sense. Especially and doesn't make no. I damn do sense. like Frank Ocean. I did like Blonde. I think Channel Orange should have been there over Blonde. But if adding Frank and not putting Mariah Carey to me is nuts. It's Honestly, nuts to me. so yeah, you know. Again, these are lists. Can't please everyone. Um, I I, I like the intent. I think the execution and the criteria could have been a bit better, but. This is the world we live in. There will probably be another list next week that people are getting angry at. So just just the, the cycle of lists. It happens. Uh, another conversation that has been a little exhausting. Uh, Drake had a <laughs> Mob Ties and Ratchet Happy Birthday reference tracks leak on social media. Um, and that's been, uh, coming off of the beef with Kendrick Lamar. Drake just being who he is, obviously the ghost writer thing that Meek put on him back in 2015. This is not an ideal thing to happen to him. And there's nuance with reference tracks, which I think a lot of people don't understand. And people have been trying to make the effort to teach the people who may and may not understand it, but they don't really care because as soon as they hear something that they think someone wrote for Drake, it's automatically, oh, there, there it is. It's just proven that, that, that he's got ghost writers. Um, and so the way I understand it, the way it's been explained to me and the way I'm sure you all understand it as well is like someone will, will make a reference track to give to another artist. Oftentimes the artist who receives the reference track doesn't use that verbatim. Maybe they'll use a hook, maybe they'll use a verse, but they'll change things in some way. And you see that with Vori's version of Mob Ties. You saw it with Quentin Miller's version of Know Yourself. Like Drake took maybe a hook idea or a couple lines and all that. But obviously in rap or when you consider yourself a rapper or you want to be looked at as a rapper, you play by different rules. And the rule is you write your shit. And Mm -hmm. that is ultimately why people are giving Drake so much shit for it. Even though he has, he's attached the MC label to himself, but he's also attached the pop star label to himself. And at this stage of his career, a lot of people view him as just a pop star. So it's like, okay, if he's a pop star who raps, is this then acceptable? So for, for you both, this whole reference tracks thing, Drake, all of the hysteria, like what, what are your feelings on it? Well, you go first. <laughs> <laughs> um, the reference track stuff is very, um, it's just one of those things that the public is getting, the public is seeing the curtain be pulled back even more. Right. Yeah. When, and, and, and that's unfortunate sometimes. Cause it's like, it's like, it's like, you know, these past two weeks, these past three weeks, a lot of people have realized Santa Claus isn't real. Mm. And that's, the, you know, that's, that's Drake for a lot of people. And you know, if we're, we all work in the industry, so we kind of know, and we kind of, not kind of, we do know. Right. And we know how this gets down. This is entertainment. We're trying to people are trying to put out the best product possible right. at all times, bro. At all times, somebody said something to me way before I started in this music stuff, and I was like still taking photos and stuff. And they said, 
at the end of the day, does the product match the vision that you have, right. that you had before? And if that product matches that vision that you had, then let's go. That's that. That's that's what that's what we're trying to do. Right. So I think reference tracks, and especially in hip hop, that's another thing. It's just hip hop. Mm-hmm. It's rap. We're we're really egotistical. We really want to. Everybody wants to know. Everybody wants to be the best. Yeah. The best. The best. The best at at, at all times. Um. Some people's camps are. Better at keeping <laughs> keeping those leaks and yeah. reference tracks low. It is loose over there. And some, some of the people camps. <laughs> some, 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 some of the people camps isn't. You know, I think you. Yeah, I seen a video today or two days or not today, but yesterday of Bobby Raps writing Xanax Damage for Future. Yeah, Bobby Raps is a legend. Shout out to my boy Bobby Raps. He yeah. writes a lot of stuff for a lot of people, and he wrote a lot of stuff for Future. Yeah, and that might break people's hearts, but at the end of the day, that's what's. That's what's going down. People are trying to make the best music possible, bro. Yeah. We're I'm trying mean, to, like, we're trying to snap. We're trying to make, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> On top of trying to make the best product, thinking about the history of black music, like, artists and musicians needed to collaborate yes. in order to get opportunity. Yeah. Like, we weren't yes. given the same opportunities as yes. white artists and musicians. So, like, mm-hmm. I get it. Because, like, when we talking about certain things, like, <laughs> yeah. my perspective change is just based on the context. But, I know that Drake has the ability to write. Yeah. So, um, and he has written for others. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, mm-hmm. I would give him that pass because I know a lot of greats have also received, you know, mm-hmm. reference tracks. People have written for them. They yeah. have written for others. Like, didn't Hove write for Dr. Dre? Yep. And there was like a recent clip of Snoop Dogg saying Corday recently wrote a song for him and we know he could rap. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah. It's yeah, I, it, yeah. Drake I, can rap. So one of the things, <laughs> one of the things you said in, in the beginning um, is very, very important, very true. It's always going to be true um, in our business, especially the music business. Collaboration usually equals success. Yeah, it usually just does, just because it's so many. Um, you have so many creative minds and, and different minds and, and one one aspect, and you're all working towards one goal. Especially like music, which is like. Who doesn't like music? You don't like music, you're low-key like right. Nazi or something. Like <laughs> I don't I don't know. But like, yeah, it's like it's like people that don't like movies. But anyways, that's a whole different conversation. But yeah, bro, co- uh collaboration equals success in, in our business. Yeah. And it's spe- especially if you can get that synergy. Yeah. And also, my bad, I don't even want to lose this thought. It just the conversation reminds me of people talking about or questioning like Beyonce and whether mm-hmm. she deserves certain Grammys mm-hmm. like that perspective comes from white people yeah. mm-hmm. like they're the ones who are saying that she doesn't deserve these accolades because there are so many songwriters on the track but yeah. you know again talking about the history of music like collaboration yeah. elevation sometimes requires collaboration mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it's it's and it's interesting you feel like it's white people because I, I feel like it's our people who are often more critical of the the multiple writers and stuff like that. Me too. I, I remember that whole conversation when uh, Views came out. People were like, yo, there's 87 writers on here. It was like, hey, when someone is sampled, <laughs> right. the original song gets credited. gets credited. So everyone who wrote on the original song is considered a writer for this song. It does not mean that they wrote uh, this track. Yeah, like DMX <laughs> didn't write Drake You With Me. He just Drake sampled you, uh, uh, what, what these bitches want from a nigga. And so it, he, DMX shows up on You With Me. Um, and so with Mob Ties, Vori is credited on that. People don't check credits. With No, uh, with know Yourself. That's not news. Right. Yeah. Quentin Miller was credited on Know Yourself. People just didn't check credits at the time. Party Next Door is credited on Ratchet Happy Birthday. People I didn't check that. People don't check credits. Like that's, that's, that's just part of my job. That's just what I do. Like, I'll check to see who wrote it or who the producer is to give the producer love. But like most people don't check and it's okay. I don't necessarily expect them to, but this isn't groundbreaking stuff. Like, like it's not like Drake is hiding these yeah, people. Quentin right. Miller wasn't being hidden when Meek called Drake out for it. It's just mm-hmm. people didn't know because people weren't checking at the time. And I think for Drake, it's unfortunate because that ghostwriter label was attached to him and he's the only person whose reference tracks are getting leaked. So yeah. while there are a lot of rappers who are in similar situations as him, he's the only one that this happens to. So he's the only one who catches the flack for it. And he said it in that uh, Rap Radar interview. He was like, I've been in studios with all these other guys who <laughs> have people writing for them. But like, if I have to take the bullets, I'll take it. Um, and so that's just his, his unfortunate reality is once Meek put that on him, people 
the, the the OVO dungeon jokes yeah. and Party Next Door is writing for him and Division's writing for him and all that. They can't put their own stuff out because they're writing for Drake. Like that's just forever <laughs> attached to him. Um, and, and I get it because again, like a, as a rapper, it's 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 murky waters. But you know, it's it's all about perspective. And I think fans and naysayers want to believe that the person who is saying these things that they connect with is actually saying them himself. Mm-hmm. And so when you get a reference track, it's like, damn, like, did you come up with this dope bar or, or not? Um, I remember the, <laughs> there's this funny tweet about it. They're like, you know, Drake wrote something cause there's always one terrible line in each <laughs> verse. <laughs> and it made me think of Drake's worst lines. Like you toying with it, like happy meal. Um, check the weather is getting real oppy outside. Um, that one wasn't too bad that's a good little caption on instagram yeah it's funny um fuck was the other one this says so many shout out to asian girls let the lights dim some that that, that was like borderline (laughs) i i I actually kind of like that one but but i could get why someone he's 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 insane slave to the pussy but i'm just playing the field nigga like okay (laughs) yeah yeah he he loves a slave reference now Uh, that i think about it i'm just like wait he was a house no never oh my god but yeah, it's just honestly, and I, I was telling you before we recorded, like, I just muted the word ghost writer, ghost space writer, reference, reference tracks, reference track, all that stuff, because the conversation just gets very disingenuous. And it, it, it comes from uh, a place of people who are not informed. And it's mm-hmm. okay that they're not informed because fans don't check credits. But um, yeah, it's just like, if, if you were familiar with this, it wouldn't be as big of a deal to you. Um, so that's just what it is. And Drake is a very easy target to pile on right now. Like that's just also the reality of it. Like, so that's, that's what it is. But, um, I, I, I truly don't care. Um, like I'm, I don't care. I'm here for good music at the end of the day. Like, and people have been saying it. They're like, yo, if one of his timestamp tracks, if a reference track comes out for that, check on Armand. That changes. Thing. I mean, I, I, <laughs> check I, I, on I, Armand. If that happens. I'll be okay. I'll be maybe to myself. I'll you know <laughs> express some feelings, but that 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 would change things for me because like Ratchet Happy Birthday, I don't even like that song. I don't give a fuck about that. Right, Mob Ties is hard, so I'm like, damn, I'm like, like yeah, whatever. Song. But it's like it doesn't change my enjoyment of the song. I feel you. I, I feel played you on it the, the other time, day on the timestamp stuff. If the time if it's a reference crash game on the timestamp stuff. Yeah, that's like, like that's that's different. That hurts. That's different. That like, hurts people. If I hear a reference for over, he over my dead body, those, he was ripping those bitches. Yeah, Tuscan leather. You oh, know, yeah. one of those. Like, nah, bro, you can't. No, nah, can't, yeah. can't do that. That's what. Uh, that's what it is. So l- let us know if y'all care about reference tracks. I would. I would love to hear that conversation. Um, this week, two of my favorite things came together in uh, professional wrestling and hip hop. Sexy Red appeared on WWE NXT. They are doing a phenomenal job with these hip hop and wrestling integrations. Meek Mill did the intro at WrestleMania. Lil Wayne rapped there. Um, and just music in general, pop culture in general, Bad Bunny's wrestling, all that stuff. Like, but I'm, I'm sure y'all saw the sexy red clips on social media. Funny as fuck. Like she's she's just herself. And Always. and I love that she is herself. Mm-hmm. Cause like <laughs> people in, in 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 my wrestling group chat were like, yo, like I hope she doesn't come and like say nigga on the air or something. I was like, I don't, I don't think she'll do that. But I was like, damn, what is sexy red gonna do? And she pulls up and twerks and they loved it. Like <laughs> the streets loved it. Like Shawn Michaels in, in a car with her singing his theme song, <laughs> Triple H quoting the video, all that. Like the the crowd really took to her. And they did a really good job in putting her with all the black wrestlers who would understand her and like it wouldn't be awkward on tv like putting her next to some random white person would have been weird she was with all the niggas <laughs> walked out with the niggas was chilling with like it, it, it was just perfect so uh really love like just how she's able to ascend in this way like if you would have told me when pound town came out that sexy red would be on wwe television i <laughs> I, I i would not have believed it <laughs> but she's truly ascending in stardom while maintaining her authenticity. Mm-hmm. She's got this lovable rough around the edges type of personality. It's like, she's not super polished. She's not, you know, like, like she's what people would, would maybe not consider marketable, but she is marketable. It's, it, it's a really fascinating um, duality to her. So I just, I really enjoyed that. The clips were funny. She's going to be hosting, uh, their battleground PLE in Las Vegas, and mm. she's going to be doing mm. more appearances apparently. So, That's That's sexy. can't wait to see that. Um, the streets want Meg, Megan the Stallion mm. to pop up. 
That'll Cardi B has perfect. been supposed to do it for years. Mm. So I think this is going to open the door for more wrestlers. Lotto's been tweeting about wrestling more lately. So <laughs> it's like, yo, all, all y'all come through. All, all, all the baddies. <laughs> do you feel free to twerk on, on my TV when I'm watching on Tuesday. I watch, watch a match and then I'll watch a twerk off. I'm, I'm here for it. Um, but that was fucking amazing. A um, little bit of NBA playoffs as well. Um, I want to talk about the emergence of Anthony Edwards. Um, he has been absolutely fantastic. Uh, I, I remember this one game in uh, 2022 when they were facing the Grizzlies. And it was the end of the game. The Timberwolves were up. And Anthony Edwards went for a steal that he didn't need to go for. And John Morant dribbled around him, game-winning layup. Timberwolves ended up losing that series. And I was like, damn, Ant didn't need to do that. He's, he's, he's got to mature a little bit, like, a, as a player. And in two, just two years' time, like, he's got a really great command of the game. He's very confident. He's willing to take the big shot. He'll, he'll lose a game, and, like, he's not shaking. Like, the, the T-Wolves were down 3-0 to the Mavs, and he was just like, I'm, I'm not like <laughs> I'm good. Like he, he's, he's very composed, obviously extremely confident, charismatic. Like, so I'm, I'm, it's been really fun to uh, see him become who he is, especially because the T wolves knocked those Denver nuggets out of the playoffs. Fuck the nuggets. <laughs> y'all, y'all have broken my LeBron James fan heart <clears throat> two years in a row. And the Minnesota Timberwolves handle jaw. And I love them for it. Um, how, how have you felt about the Western Conference playoffs, too? And then you, Ebony, too, if, if, if you've been watching. <laughs> you know I ain't been watching that shit. <laughs> hey, hey, you know, I see Anthony Edwards I don't want to my... assume. The, right. You, there, you know what? You're there right. are podcasts I watch where they'll talk about sports, and they'll just, like, completely <laughs> pretend the woman doesn't exist. I'm <laughs> yeah, like, nah, like, that's crazy. You, you're talking. Okay. So I'm Stay like, busy is an equal opportunity mm-hmm. employer. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Mm-hmm. You feel me? Mm-hmm. But no, I don't watch that shit. It's all I good. just see him on my Twitter feed. He looks like a badass kid. Yeah. Absolutely. He looked like he used to be bad. Absolutely. It would not surprise me. Like, oh class my God. clown. That's funny. But he does me. look charismatic. Like, I see why the cameras yeah. are all on him. So. Yeah. Shout out to him. But go ahead, Will. Yeah. Um, you asked me about the Western? Yeah, just Western, the Western Conference. For Western now. Conference? Yeah, I think, bro, I, ugh, I'm i excited. It's tight. It's tight to see some, one of these new players about to win a championship. Yeah. Whether it's Luka, whether it's Ant, even though they're down 3-1. Um, it's probably going to be Luca, or like obviously on the east side. Even though we're not talking about the east, one of these some new players about to win. Yeah. So I think that's really exciting for the NBA. It's exciting for new fans. Um, it's just exciting. It's exciting to see. Yeah. Like if Luca gets his championship, oh my god, the promo run, the press run they're going to yeah. have for him is going to be so crazy. Yeah. And if Ant won, it would be the same thing. You know what really separates Ant though, and Anthony Edwards right now is he has the shoe of the year. Yeah, the shoes are fire. His, she has the shoe of the year, fire. so it's very. It has a very cultural aspect to it, and then, uh, like off the court and on the court, mm-hmm. and then it has a super on the court aspect because he's obviously good. Yeah, as fuck. So it's like, yeah. it's tight, man. It's tight. Yeah, no, West has been exciting. fun. Uh, Mavs had a really tight series with the Thunder. I, th- I think the Thunder are going to be great for years to come. The West is going to be tight for for years. Like, there's there's a lot of great young talent, like you said, and you know just. You know, you think back to those years where it was Warriors Cavs for four years in a row, and then the mm-hmm. Warriors went again in 2019. Mm-hmm. It's just like, damn, like we lived through an era of such crazy greatness, and now those guys are a bit yeah. older now, and the young niggas are stepping up, Some and stuff is about to we're trying to figure out who the next face of the NBA is going to be. Like Braun wow. is still here, mm-hmm. but we're really trying to figure out who the next face is. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. there's arguments for Tatum, there's arguments for Ant, there's arguments for Luca, there's yeah. there's Jokic, there's still Giannis. Like Giannis mm-hmm. was hurt, so the Bucks, mm-hmm. you know, got knocked out first round. Giannis and Dame got hurt, but like Giannis still exists. Joel Embiid, like there's there's a lot of it's a pivotal oh, time. Yeah. What y'all betting on to be the face? <sighs> That's a good question. I don't know. It's tough for me. Yeah, you Who know, the parlay hitting for? People, <laughs> tell me. I mean, people. <laughs> people say Ant. Um, yeah, I like Ant too. I think I think he can be the face of it. You know who I think is really going to be good, a good face. And I didn't realize he had so much personality. Is um, Wemby. Wemby, yeah. He has a yeah, he has a lot yeah. of personality. Cool he yeah. has a lot of personality. And then like the ad, the Nike ad they did with him mm-hmm. with the crop circle that looks like an alien said he's an alien. Yeah. They made a huge crop circle. Yeah. The marketing on that is perfect, bro. I was just yeah. like, no, Damn. he's he's just a larger than life being. And he he's, really he he did his thing this year. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I was I 
I, I, I was admittedly hating on him, on him a little bit because yeah, he, I mean, he came in with so much hype. I was yeah. like, yo, it's a young nigga, get him mm-hmm. out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> and he's, he's on the Spurs. Like, the Spurs ain't going yes, nowhere. But yes. he had some incredible games, um, and, and I think he's only going to get better. Um, so I, I, I really think they're waiting for him to emerge before they can really crown him the face. But, mm-hmm. you know, if it's just going to be this crop of guys who are just all leading the league, then I think they're happy with multiple guys. Like, And there's still, like, Shea Gil- Gilgis Alexander. <laughs> who, you know, has has charisma, has personality. Um, you know, he's always, like, getting memed for his style and stuff. And he's also just very talented, so. It might, honestly, like, you, it might be a crop of guys for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. you remember, remember, like, 2011, maybe 2012, when it was, like, D Rose, mm-hmm. KD, Westbrook. Yeah, remember, you remember that? Remember that yep. uh, Christmas commercial when they all shot the yeah, Christmas? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like that, yeah, like that. <laughs> that was the crop of that was a new crop of guys. Yeah. Obviously, LeBron was still Bron, so like, yeah, he what he was the face. But but that was Derrick Rose's uh, year when he won that MVP. Mm-hmm. It was just a very it was, it was a new yeah. crop of guys, and I feel like that's we're at that point again. Yeah, and now somebody's gonna somebody's gonna merge, but we're in the crop. We're in the crop. And it, it, it's tight for. It's time for new fans and like kids yeah. to see like, you know, new just new faces and new yeah. people winning. Like, you know, people have seen Bron go to the finals nine straight times. <laughs> yeah. like, like that's almost a decade decade straight it's of insane. like like come on like yeah. people mm-hmm. want to see something else. So it's insane. And we kind of touched on the Knicks a bit earlier, but the Eastern side of things, um, Knicks were very exciting this year. Um, I I, I got to give them full credit. Um, J- Jalen Brunson, like we talked about. Uh, that trade they made midseason where they got OG Anunoby. I think mm. he was a really good piece. Um, Mitchell Robinson was great. Mm. Isaiah Hartenstein, Dante DiVincenzo. Mm. Um, they've got guys, and I think that, that that roster, if they can keep it together, which I don't think they will, like Hartenstein, I believe he's going to be a free agent. Um, but I think that that roster healthy, even if they lose one of those guys, like they're, they're, they're a serious contender. You know, Boston is still Boston, you know, so Boston keeps this core together. They'll probably be number one again, but I, I really wanted to see Boston Knicks in a, in a Eastern Conference Finals situation. I think that I think that could have went seven. You know, as much as I do believe the Celtics are, are a super team, um, I, I think that the Knicks could have kept up with them. So, Bro. super teams still exist. They still they do. Yeah, yeah they do. They Bro. do. Uh, the, they're not as <laughs> plentiful as they were in that era where it was like the Warriors and yeah. then the I was Cavs. Buffalo Wild Wings at that time. Yeah, <laughs> and then like. Uh, Philadelphia tried to put one together with Jimmy, Ben, mm-hmm. and uh, Embiid, and then mm-hmm. the Nets did it with KD, uh, Harden, and Kyrie, mm-hmm. and then um, the Suns tried to with KD, Beal, and it's uh, over, Book, but that's, over in a year, that's it's fine. not hitting. But yeah, this, I think we're I think we're slowly moving our way out of the super team era. We are, um, which is which is good. You know, I like I, it. I love the parody. I love the competition. It's been different teams in the finals every year since. 2019, yeah, because that was Raptors, Warriors, then it was Lakers, mm-hmm, Heat, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. then it was Bucks, Sixers, mm-hmm. no Bucks, uh, Suns, then it was Warriors, Celtics, then it was Nuggets, Heat. So it's been mostly different you got teams. Some good memories. Hey, you know, uh, sports betting and and, and, <laughs> and just and just love of the game. But, right. Um, you know, it's been mostly different teams every year, which is fun. It's been really fun to see like those those Warriors Cavs series. While it was a cool rivalry, it, it got exhausting after a while. I, I really didn't want to see it. It's been the fourth time. You was, over, you was over it, gang? Especially Bron getting sweat, bro. Like, that, yeah. that hurt my soul. Hurt yeah. my soul. Yeah, I, 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 I like that. So. I was I at Wild you. Wings. Mm-hmm. The fucking AC all you. set up in there. Yeah, throwing shit. I'm like, all right, it's time for me to go. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. So, but yeah. Playoffs have been fun. Um, You know, we're at the point now where it's like one game a night, which is a little sad. But, hey, you know, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, So, I want to move on to a... Little rapid fire game for our get for our listeners to get to know both of you a bit more. So, so I'm gonna throw something out there. You give the first answer if you want to explain it, you can. But I'm gonna just throw something out there. Y'all good? Y'all ready? I think so. All right. Favorite place to eat in the city? Mm. <laughs> Favorite place to eat in the city? Mm-hmm. I've been in my cooking era right now. Okay, what you what, what you cooking? What was the best thing you cooked recently? Um, I'm a salmon warrior. But, salmon, okay. Yeah, I'm a salmon warrior, but I've been trying to learn how to cook like the Caribbean dishes that I grew up okay. eating, like the rice and peas. I'm trying to perfect. Okay. You know, but um, if I was to go to the city, catch. Catch, okay. Yeah, I've never been. 
That's fine. That's fine. Um, one of the places I've been going to, and actually, you know, my boy Carl, Carl folks put me onto this. Um, Shout out to Carl. Great yeah, dude. Great, great, great dude. Great lawyer. Um, I don't know if it's my favorite place, but it's one of the places I like to go frequently. Um, have you guys heard of Lore Fish Bar? Lore, lore, uh, L O R E, no L U R E. Oh, no, nah, I never. You should, yes, yes, yes. Okay. Very good. On top okay. Very good. We should, you know what? One night we're gonna do your go. gang trip out yes. there. We okay. should. My treat. We'll on do you. it. Oh, yes. yes. Oh, yes. shit. Yes. <laughs> my treat. I'm ordering on top shelf. <laughs> <laughs> my treat. Seriously. We can do it. We can do it. We can do it. What so, about yeah. you, Armand? Um, uh, Kieran knows this is uh, my favorite Italian spot, uh, Pasa Note. <gasps> Fantastic Ooh. eats. I know the menu front and back. The two for 18 martinis, they're strong. <laughs> Shits get you right. Okay. Uh, on times where I'm really trying to get lit, I'll, I'll go three rounds of those and I've. I'll, I'll be stumbling back to the bus, but it, they're great. They, they know me. Like anytime I walk in, Oh, you're back. Or, oh, I haven't seen you in a while. Like, that's that's how much I'll I be there. I love when they do that. Yeah, though. it's love. It's yeah. love. It's like, yo, you remember me because it's bit, because it'd be, it be, it be lit in there. It'd be busy right. in there. So, right. a lot of people would go. But I, I you love. made me go one time. I seen you tweet about it. Yeah. And, like, <laughs> I was in the city. I was like, let me fuck with shit. Let me go, man. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was heat, right? that shit up. That uh-huh. shit was crazy, bro. <laughs> That shit was crazy. I was like, damn. I'm, I'm I'm happy to say everyone who I've suggested it to or taken there, they've all loved it. So that's that's my spot. That's my spot. I'm I, I, And you know what? I kind of regret saying I, I'm not one of those people who tries to gatekeep spots, but I'm like, yo, listeners, don't don't ruin Pasa Note for me. I right? like that food better be the same quality when I go there. The martinis better still be two for 18. If it's two for 1995, I'm blaming y'all niggas. It's a problem. I'm blaming y'all. But yeah, that's that's my spot. I, I do need to expand my palate. So I'm I'm, I'm gonna check catch because I, I wanted to go to catch Lore Fish Bar. I'm gonna check out. Um, like I said, I I, I still want to hit Carbone. I've never been to Carbone. Me either. What's what's that other spot that people um that people always post it when they Tatiana. go Tatiana's yeah I've yeah, been yeah. at least three times is he yeah I ain't okay I've never okay. been all right so then that one's gonna be on me okay after okay. 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 okay let's see look at this really <laughs> group trips yo to join the Patreon maybe you can come get dinner with us one day right? <laughs> patreon.com backslash <laughs> that'd be fire we'll do a raffle you can come get dinner with the guys that's fire no, actually um next question your favorite song of the summer throughout your lifetime. Whoa. My life <laughs> throughout your lifetime. First of all, I just realized that I'm old because I threw a barbecue for Memorial. Well, shout out to you for that. <laughs> but um, my life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, mm-hmm. I'm paying a man, so you know what I mean. Yeah, you know, reggae, reggae, multiple reggae genres, songs, salsa, <laughs> hip hop. We we ask the hard questions on Stay Busy. You know, you I'm know, thinking about Ashanti and Ja Rule. It's yeah. a lot going uh-huh. on in my mind. Mm-hmm. Song of the summer in my lifetime. Mm-hmm. Amory. Hey, Marie. That's a good one. I can't we I can't we fall in love. Yeah, that's the, That's a good one. Just, yeah. As soon as it hits like 72 degrees, Honestly, that's a, you gotta play that. That's a good one. Gotta Damn. play that. I just want to look out my window and just... Mm-hmm. <sighs> I get it. Yeah. I get it. But it's so many, especially like during that era, that yeah. early 2000s when hip-hop and R&B collabs mm-hmm. were like real hip-hop R&B collabs. Mm-hmm. Like every single Ashanti and Ja Rule collab could yeah. be that for me. Um, <sighs> You know, I got to show love to Vibes Fuck. Cartel, Summertime, mm-hmm. Turn Up the Fuck, Turn and Wine. It's a whole bunch, like my whole high school um, era, the whole Gaza Gully era. It's, it's a lot. Yeah. Um, the whole Daddy Yankee era, Don Omar, <laughs> um, We Seen the Yandel. Mm-hmm. It was a lot. Yeah, you snap. Oh. Yeah, so I... I can't. My you life? Snapping. I thought you were going to say this summer. <laughs> no. Yeah, you snapping, bro. Nah, I don't even know. Nah, nah, nah. This summer. Think what dropped in this? Like, I'm, right? I'm trying to, like, go back in my life. Like, okay, so I was, like, this age, but when was summer? Like, uh-huh. when, right. when, did that, when did that drop? Like, I don't yeah. I was about to say some maybe some like I don't know. Summer bro. rain. I was about to say some bow wow shit. I don't know. Yo, like, that's like, valid. Yeah, yeah I'm, that's I'm valid. pretty like, sure bow wow like, Sierra like you. That came or out like even the younger, summer. even younger shit. Like even like oh, the dog in me are like some crazy. <laughs> yeah, facts, like real talk. Real talk though, yeah. like yeah. real talk. Or like some maybe even you know what I've been listening to and my guilty pleasure. It's not even guilty pleasure. Gotta be telling people you've been seeing Armand. <laughs> That Blue Star album by Pretty Ricky oh, yeah, yeah. is one Legendary. of the best oh. debut yeah. 
R and B albums no of all business. time. Yeah, bro, no, none whatsoever. <laughs> no whatsoever. I had no business. Bro, your Whether body it was grind is with amazing, me or grind bro. on me. I, it should not have been in my Bro, that, bro, those first five songs is crazy, heat. bro. Like special heat. Time. Special like, time. Heat. Heat, heat, bro. Yeah. I was I have been listening. I just been I've been going back through their sh- like just the Blue Star album, just sitting down with it and just really listening to it. That's that's one of the best debut R and B albums I've ever heard. In my life. Mm-hmm. Them niggas was going crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Them niggas was going crazy, bro. And, I, and they were going through a lot of problems personally. So the fact that, that y'all was that, producing all bro, that, what? Mm-hmm. Bro, them niggas is crazy, bro. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what I've been. That's what I do now. Older a little bit is go back and listen to albums. It's that, so fun. Yeah, it's bro. so he, fun he, to, you go start back. to get it. You start, yeah. you start to get it. You be like, you be like, oh, now mm-hmm. I see why. Because most of us were just kids in the back seat riding around with the radio. Yeah, exactly. you, you, you had no choice. Whatever. Like yeah. you really had no you choice. Like, you would hear the cool. same songs all the yeah, time. Okay, whatever. Blah blah blah. But like the you... concept of listening to an album, I probably didn't do that till I bought my first album. I think the first album that I got was Usher 8701. That was mine too. Mine too. I got Special. it on bootleg it was and I listened to that Special. front to back. Yeah. It was 8701 and I got um, Bow Wow. Like those mm-hmm. were my two. Yeah. And then yeah. the like Doggy Bag album? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then like a Sammy, the Sammy record. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. yeah, bro. 87, 8701 is really a lot of people's our age first album. Yeah. Yo, when you said mm-hmm. that, I thought it in my head and then yeah. you said it, I'm like, oh it's my amazing. God. I, I remember watching the You Remind Me video on 106 and Park. Yes. <laughs> and then yes. from there, you just everything. That's my favorite. You got it bad. Like, oh my God. That's Special. my that's my faverite Usher song. I love career. Twerk It Out on that album. That's a good one, too. That's yeah. a good, that's a good one, too. That's a great album. It's a great album. It's I think be, my it's, it's one than, of it's my better than confessions. Um, hey, th- this is a conversation oh. we've had. Brian Michael Cox, he said it's better, his it's answer better than changes. confessions. Yeah. I'm, I'm I'm not mad at it. And I remember Usher on his interview with Shannon Sharp, he was like, "I think 8701 is better, but Confessions is obviously the bigger one. Mm-hmm. So it depends. It depends on what what you're looking for, how you assess. 8701 is crazy. It is. That was his it first is. adult album. Yeah. I think that's what it's makes amazing, it so bro. special. Yeah. You know, he was a child star. He didn't even know if his career was going to sustain because mm-hmm. of puberty. Like, yeah. mm-hmm. he did that. Yeah, he was on the upper. Like One that. of my options, and I, I remember because I used to sit and <laughs> well, stand in front of my webcam webcam with my brother and practice this dance. <laughs> C- crank that soldier boy. <laughs> like, you, you you can't deny the impact. Facts. Like, that. that's, I think that's like and Soulja Boy is very influential with, with YouTube, yeah. like with going viral before going viral was like really a thing. Mm-hmm. Like that, I just remember like going to my cousin's crib and him being like, yo, you heard Soulja Boy? Nigga, of course I heard Soulja Boy. What now. are you talking Hit about? <laughs> and, and it was like it, the, the, the leak dropped first. And I remember when I saw him on BET, the actual music video come out and they gave him like the star treatment bow wow in the music video, yep. Omarion in it. Um, just like the song was obviously mixed and mastered and like really like that they really packaged Soldier Boy to be a star. So him and his whole crew. Yeah. The vlogs, yeah. Yeah. Like, so it was an era. That's a song that I'm 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 just always going to hold dear because like I, I remember the moments with it. It's, um, go ahead. It, it, it's crazy. You mentioned the cousin thing. Um, and then you mentioned it way back when you was introducing me. The, the power of word of mouth back then mm-hmm. was so crazy yeah. you, have, you, you have to lie to your cousin like yeah I heard it and then you'd be <laughs> fuck I didn't hear that shit. I gotta like go I gotta go like try to like learn this dance yeah. and this and that like bro I remember when the kid I remember when I first went to school when the Matrix dropped and people were like you seen the Matrix yeah I seen the Matrix but in the back of my head my parents would let me see R rated movies so I, right. I never saw the Matrix yeah. and niggas was talking about oh you seen Neo do this and that I was like yeah I saw him do it's like that never happened. I'm like, oh, oh shit. You, have to lie. you know what I'm saying? Like, you have to lie like, about it to fit in. But yeah, but like that's that's how special word of mouth was with yeah. like cultural moments, especially crank that, all that type of stuff. Like yeah. that, the word of mouth and crank that was so special, bro. Yeah, never seen nothing like it. Yeah. Never seen nothing like it. it was special. Man. I knew word of mouth was crazy when Ciara really addressed. Oh my god, those claims. And I'm like, damn, girl, you heard it. We mm-hmm. were just talking about that at school. We were playing like, around. Like, what the fuck? And she really addressed no. it. And I was like, oh my. It wasn't right. on social media. And it was like you really had no. There was no one could verify it. It, it just got around. Like yeah. it was just enough people said it to where it was like, okay, right. we really believe. Like Ciara's a, a guy. And like, I was <laughs> jealous that she was with Bow Wow. So I was like, yeah, uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny as hell. that took me back no for real um, that's funny as hell. another one I think this is summer 2011 DJ Khaled Drake Rick Ross Lil Wayne I- I'm on one 
was that cool. was that, that I'm was kind of tired of, of all the Khaled songs. I, I, I understand. It's fine. I get it's annoyed fine. in the party when they play that. Shit. I understand. Like, I understand. The, 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 that one is always gonna that be one's special crazy to me. Though. But I'm I, on one's crazy. I, I, I do understand, I understand why you feel that way. Yeah, I'm like, right, time to freshen up. Mm-hmm. Take my picture. <laughs> I think I think "Pop That" by French was the summer after. That that was a good one. Damn. Yeah, um, that was. shit. Welcome to the party was nuts in Dior. I'm Welcome to the party. Shout out, shout out to Pop. You know, yeah, recent, just just recently. That's that's one of them. That yeah, was, like, rest in peace, to pop for sure. Yeah. Uh, the, the the summer Fetty Wap had <laughs> oh. <laughs> special oh. times. Special keys. times because oh he because he had like five songs rocking at the same time. He had Six that, seven nine that trap queen crazy, my bro. way. It's a really good debut. That album is it's really good. Amazing, it's like bro. one of the ones that you heard all the singles before you heard the album, but then the album is good itself. So it's like I don't because even really mind the way they sequenced it. Yeah, yeah it was good perfect. Fuck. Yeah, it was perfect. Like it was like those first like. Seven, eight songs is like just flows. Like, like you yeah. said, you just named off all of them. And they yeah. all like flow like perfectly. Like it's and it's yeah. crazy because when that cold, album bro. came he was, out, he was, he was nice. that's when I started my career professionally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and um, so you know, music was just hitting a lot more differently exactly. for me too. Because I'm like, oh, I'm seeing these niggas. Mm-hmm. They coming through to the office. Yeah, and mm-hmm. I would never forget that I suggested like, oh, let's put him on the cover. Mm-hmm. And you know, oh boy, <laughs> made it seem like I was wilding. Oh, like, why a, would we put him on the cover? Always that. No one's put him on the cover before. I'm like, that's the point. And then we put him and Monty on the cover when it was washed up. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that yeah. summer was a special. Yeah, damn, I'm going down you, memory you lane snap. now. You, they, yo, know, they was tripping. Whatever. You yeah, got it. you got it. It's, it's. I sad was all how young and happens. naive, and I was like, yeah, I, I didn't even know that I'm not even supposed, supposed to be, be doing, doing that. Yeah. <laughs> like, girl, shut up. They was like, yeah. go sit that, back down. Yeah, <laughs> like you, you ain't here to fucking. But that's the thing. Right. <laughs> that's the thing is, in those scenarios, the older people in charge should be listening to the people who are outside, like who really know, like, yo, not Fetty is he's. Popping down, he's only gonna go up. Like, yeah. like that's ultimately what y'all brought us in for. So. Do you remember Terry? Terry, the graphic designer. Yes, yeah. That conversation is when he became my uncle Terry mm-hmm. because, and that's also when I peep game too. Mm-hmm. Because when I'm there, kind of like, you know, in hindsight, like going back and forth with trying to like defend my point. When he was like, why would we put him on the cover? I'm like, because he's hot and mm-hmm. no one's done it before. Terry's in the back, like exactly. <laughs> and then I look like. I was a little bit too passionate. Like, we gonna we gonna talk. <laughs> yeah, no, it's 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 always good when you get that cosign from someone, yeah. someone who believes in. Yeah, he believed in the me. vision that you have. But, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, all that to say, we've had some damn incredible songs of the summer throughout our lifetime. Yeah, <laughs> that was such a hard question, and I'm about to think about it <laughs> yeah. and we'll come with a solid facts. answer. Yeah. Yeah. Like, bro, I'm, I'm, I'm about to turn 29. That's a lot of summers. <laughs> That's a lot of fucking summers. Oh, oh, summer. time. <laughs> What? So many summers. My, I don't even want yeah, to count. Yeah, yeah, a lot yeah. of summers. Um, lastly, what is a quote that you would say you live by? Speak softly, but walk with a big stick. Okay. I love that one. My favorite. That was uh, to Teddy Roosevelt, right? It Teddy is. Teddy Roosevelt, yeah. You know what quote I like is from, um, you guys ever seen the movie Dead Poets Society? I have not, actually. Robin Williams. Um. Really, it's really, it's a really, it's a really good, um, really good movie. Um, but there's a poem and, you know, he's telling them about, it's about life or whatever. He was like, you know, um, the, the great play must go on. What will your verse be in that great play? Mm. The great play is life, obviously. Mm. Your verse is obviously you. So, Mm. you know. To the to 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 because life life always goes life is always going to go on without you right mm-hmm. and it's going to you know that song's going to keep coming up regardless of you know after we pass or anything you know what I'm saying you just want to make sure you lay your verse in right. this in this great play and um yeah exactly. fuck with that my two go hand in hand it's be bold mighty forces will come to your aid and growth is uncomfortable and I think to in order to be bold you got to be uncomfortable and so those are two that I live by and uh. They haven't filled me yet, so I rock with them. But uh, cool. Yeah, I got to know them a little bit. You'll get to know them a lot more over the course of this season. So, um, yes. you know, enjoy those. Let us know your favorite quotes. Let us know your favorite songs of the summer throughout your lifetime. Please. Favorite places know. to eat in the city so Please. I can raise the prices for you like y'all going to do for <laughs> me with Pasa Note. But um, let's get into our board meeting. As you know, whenever it's the first episode of a season, we got to do the out of office segment. Now, because the show has been away for over a year, we've missed quite a lot of things. Like, yo, listeners, y'all didn't get to hear me talk about For All the Dogs. 
I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it because so much time has passed. But yeah, I, I know y'all missed my For All the Dogs review. Um, yeah, yeah, there's a lot of things I could have talked about that y'all missed. But we do have three main topics that uh, we want to get to. Um, Miss Two Bs and I already touched on this first one in the Patreon episode that you guys are going to get. So I want to really let Will kind of um, share his thoughts on the infamous, intense Drake and Kendrick Lamar beef or the 20v1, as Drake called it, <laughs> involving Weekend and Rocky and Ross and all these other guys. Like, how'd you, how'd you feel about that entire situation? Um, you know, I got wind of it early. Mm-hmm. Back in, back in probably February, mm-hmm. I got wind of it. Um, you know, Apple, a lot of these streamers, they get, they get, they get a lot of music early just so they, just so we can program it and get it, get it right. Um, and, you, and we got, we got wind of, we got wind of Kendrick dissing Drake on, 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 on Metro's thing. Yeah. And, and well, not even, not even Kendrick. It was more, it was more of future dissing Drake on the Metro thing. Mm-hmm. And that really just blew me back and it just, you know, whatever, blah, blah, blah. So I was like, okay, whatever. I kind of told people, I was like, um, something's coming and it's big. Yeah. And people thought I was playing. I was, you know, something's coming, it's big, something's coming. You're going to pick a side. People are going to pick sides. <laughs> People are going to pick sides. People are going to pick sides. They're like, nah, what you talking about? Like, that's never going to happen. Like, what are you talking about? That's not happening. People get really mad at your tweets like that, too. Okay. <laughs> whenever, whenever you're alluding just, to something. I'm just trying to tell you. I'm not even, like, being, like, I'm not even being, like, that guy of, like, hey, you're going to have to pick a side. Like, I really don't care. Yeah. Like, you you don't have to pick a side. I'm just I'm more talking. You know, yeah. I'm just letting you know, and also I'm talking to the rap fan in you. Yeah. Right, I'm talking to right. a lot of a lot of the fan in you. Like a lot of people are fans, and that's cool, bro. We're all fans of this shit. We wouldn't be doing it if we wasn't. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I got wind of it. It started to happen. Um, you know, the 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 future in Metro and Kendrick track drops. Mm-hmm. And obviously, when niggas heard that, yeah, that that shook up the world. Yeah. Um. I kind of knew about the Kendrick stuff. I didn't really know about the Kendrick stuff. I'm, like I said, I was more focused. What I heard was about Future. Mm-hmm. Uh, future and, you know, this and him, this and that. Um, you know, the battle... The battle did not go in the favor of Drake. <laughs> at all. Yeah. Um, it was actually... It actually started... You know you know when it got biblical? <laughs> you know you know when it got biblical? What what did, what did, was it was it the heart part six or was it family matters that Kendrick Kendrick dropped like twenty minutes? Oh after. yeah, Drake dropped family matters that Friday night. Meet mm. the Grams came like thirty minutes later. Bro, he punched this nigga in the he uppercutted this nigga with a with a drop. It was crazy. It was yeah. like it was like he like it was like huh yeah. And it was like that's when I was like oh I, I was like oh shit like this is like he's he's dead ass serious. He's not fucking around. Somebody's about to die. <laughs> Somebody's about to die right now. Somebody's about to die. And you know what? Somebody died when not like us dropped. Yeah. And yeah. You hear that shit outside? That shit rings outside. Ring. They not like uh they not like bro, it's like it's a yeah. It, I'm throwing ass for Everybody, bro, everybody's going crazy. They not like I, us. It's crazy. They not like us. I, I was at a wedding. It's this weekend. crazy, bro. There's little kids on the dance floor and the adults were just Hey, kids, y'all do your thing. The adults is rocking out. They just, they, they lost their minds when they played. It was, you saw uh, the bar mitzvah? <clears throat> no, I was at a wedding. No, did you see the bar mitzvah video? When they oh, I did see that. Yeah, yeah, I did see that. I did see that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, just... It's, it, and it's, it's admittedly a great song. Like, it, mm-hmm. me, me and Miss Two B's talked about how it's crazy. People are dancing to lines like certified pedophile, mm-hmm. but it's just undeniably good music that it's, people are just like, hey, fuck it. Like, <laughs> I think, you know. For for some people, not me, but some people, like you know, like like, like I said before, speaking to the fan, it's a lot, a lot of people are fans of this of this rap stuff, and a lot of people take this stuff, you know, kind of seriously. Um, so I think, I think it's kind of scary for if you're a Drake fan or Drake that you know every time he drops or whatever this and that, there will always be this asterisk of, well, Kendrick Lamar mm-hmm. kicked your ass, yeah, and you couldn't beat him. Yeah. He's not gonna shake that off. And you yeah. can't. You that's, that's and it's two hard. losses in a row. Too. Yeah, bro. I don't. That's that's, that's hard. That's hard to shake off, yeah. bro. Back to back. That's hard. That's yeah. hard to shake off. But I can see it now. If he drops something that has a number one, it's gonna be cool, and people are gonna be like, yeah, like yeah. Drake, like he back. But it's always gonna be that like little caveat. Like, yeah. You know what? 
you could the boogeyman came. Yeah. <laughs> Like all, he like, up the score. Yeah, yeah bro. Like all that shit is true now. Like the boogeyman shit. All that shit is true, and that's that's. Yeah. I don't know, man. That's unfortunate. That's unfortunate for them. Yeah, it was hard to watch. Yeah, <laughs> it was. It was. It was definitely. You know, and it was hard to watch. And then you know, as people started copping, please, well, well, you know, you know, well, family matters, and and this and that. It's such a good song. You hear what he's saying? Blah blah blah. And then so. Someone, someone, I have not been copping, please. <laughs> someone, don't, don't do that. Someone dropped the. Don't put that on me. Someone dropped the uh, the gif of, of Jada uh, Jada Kiss at the at the at the verses shit. He said, he said that was good, but it's not, not good enough, enough <laughs> nigga. Like for real though, like it's like it was, it was just like it was like that, bro. And I swear to God, if he didn't, if Kendrick didn't drop twenty minutes after that, it probably would have hit. But the way Kendrick just came back yeah. in like twenty minutes, like oh, we got something for you, nigga, and yeah. then dropped the hit. He was his whole. <laughs> Formula on yeah. him. It was. It was. It don't make no sense. It was a master. It's scary. It was bad. It was a master it was class. Bad. Yeah, it's scary, bro. Yeah. Because what happened? Like, I don't know what happened next. Like, I don't. I really don't know. Like, if Kendrick, Kendrick might come out the album soon. I see Drake's dropping some some songs and this and that. Drake's trying to act like shit is cool. But it, that is killing me. Shit's not that cool, he's, my nigga. He's <laughs> he's really doing his best to seem unbothered. unbothered yeah, bro. And it's not working. It's not, bro. Like, bro. Yeah. I, I think he can benefit from some, you know, little brief absence. Nikki does it all the time. Mm-hmm. Like she will take a hiatus, not yeah. post a thing. You won't see her. He should definitely. Do and that. then the barbs will just be like literally summoning her. And then yeah. it's like I, I do think he can benefit from a little break. That and, and that's my thing. I think about yeah, that. And I'm just like, yo, we, there's never been a period. There's never really been a period in his career where we've been like, yo. Drake hasn't dropped. We need that Drake out. Because yeah, I never missed him. He's constantly present. Like his most inactive years were 2014 and 2019. But like 2019, No Guidance is one of the biggest songs of the year. He gave us Care Package and he re-released So Far Gone. Mm-hmm. 2014, he had two on with Tanache. Mm-hmm. Um, a couple, a couple, a couple other records. But like he was pretty quiet that year. But he also announced Views was coming. So. It was that anticipation for views. And he and had that. that 2016 summer. Yeah, 2016 was super active. He had an awesome... Like, he never really took a break. Yeah. And, and I think he's he, I think he's trying to treat this like 2018 after the push beef where he had one of his yeah. biggest years of his career. God's plan, nonstop, in my feelings, nice and for what? This is not Sicko that. mode. And I, I, I think he thinks he's going to be... I think he's going to be... Able, <laughs> this I think, is not that. Yeah, he's... Gangster. He, he thinks he's going to be able to <laughs> smooth things over with hits. But... Mm. I th- People are genuinely tired of him. Like that that's been the narrative for two that's years now. Thing too. People are tired of him. Like that's he gave us thing. honestly never mind and her loss in the same year. And then by next June, he's promoting for all the dogs. And then for all the dogs comes out. And then he says he's gonna take a break. People breathe a sigh of relief. A month later, scary hours three. Mm-hmm. I, I enjoy the music. Yeah. I'm 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 never mad at getting new music from my favorite artist, but I think just generally for his perception, him being so ubiquitous, but also so many things working against him right now with that loss like I, I think he would benefit from a break but I just don't think he has it in him to take one mm-hmm. no his ego won't, yeah. won't mm-hmm. allow him to do it he's a Scorpio they don't let things go mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so where's the lie like <laughs> no you're not lying <laughs> so yeah um, but like like we said, um, we got a full like me me and Mister B's go over the f- entire timeline of the whole thing. Even we get in the first person <laughs> shooter, we get in the J Cole seven minute in drill depth. and how he looked and all this. So Patreon users, you subscribe to that and you will see that. Um, some somber, traumatic stuff to get into. Uh, this Diddy situation. Um, back in November. Cassie files a lawsuit against him for sex trafficking, for rape, for assault, all these things. They quickly settle the lawsuit, which in hindsight, the fact that it got settled so quickly, shit don't get settled that quickly unless Mm -hmm. there's a reason you want it to be settled that quickly. But it opens the floodgates for a bunch of different women to come forward. Um, You know, a woman who says that uh, she was raped by Diddy in 2003 when she was a teenager and Harv Pierre was involved in just a bunch of different lawsuits. And then you get the lawsuit from Lil Rod, who produced on the Love album, saying he was sexually assaulted and Diddy would make him work in the bathroom while he was showering and just all these different things. And then you get to March and you see Diddy's houses are getting raided by Homeland Security. Um, 
and then obviously the recent footage that came out from the the hotel um where he's just unhinged um on cassie it's a it's a very just di- difficult to watch um it's it's hard to like form words about mm-hmm. about that mm-hmm. um and it's mm-hmm. tough because the reality of it is and it's it's a thing that people struggled with with R Kelly and some people some people even struggle with it with Tory Lanes is like they've made music that's impacted people and there's that conflict of you know can I still listen to this like damn like if 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 we cancel Diddy do we got to cancel everything he produced and all that and you know but behind all of that there are human beings who were mistreated and are scarred um you know there was the whole no diddy thing that was going around after the lawsuits came out and admittedly like people would laugh and you know there was i i i I found it funny too at first but then it's like stuff like this comes out and it's like i don't really know if i can laugh at anything associated with him um so yeah just really wild to see and i mean it's just another moment where i think we as a culture have to look within ourselves, look at the people that we look up to. Um, and the crazy part about Diddy is like, there were rumors about him for years. Like, I, 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 I don't know if y'all parents like go down YouTube rabbit holes and watch all these conspiracy videos, but my dad is always coming to me with these videos of like different rappers talking about Diddy and things that they've seen or like him just acting weird in the interview. And I was just, I was kind of like, Diddy's a weird guy, whatever. Like, I don't know, but you know, to see, the the depths of it now like he's he's not weird he's just psychotic um <laughs> i'm sorry it's not funny but yeah, yeah. no i mean uh, but uh yeah it's just uh <sighs> it's tough culture just gotta do better so yeah yeah i think um you know talking to some of my um older peers or older not, not I wouldn't say co-workers I don't I don't really work in them but older peers older people older people in this in this industry um you know just about stories and and, and things involving um Sean Combs or Diddy um and you, you know some of the things that they said or like I asked them about some of this stuff and listen and all they had to do was shake their head yes like there's a lot of a lot of this stuff is a lot of this stuff is real a lot of this stuff is um yeah, a lot of this stuff happened. And I think, you know, today, I don't know if you guys saw or you guys read the Rolling Stone article. Halfway but through. that, yeah, I feel like that that just shook up things. Like, the the, the, the tree is getting shaken. And oh, it it's, shook. It, yeah, yeah. It's getting, it's getting, <laughs> it's, 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 it's been shaking for the, it's been shaken since the lawsuit. You know what I'm saying? It's been shaking since, since Cassie came out and said, yeah, you know, this nigga's fucking insane. Yeah. So it's been shaking since, you know, at this point, I'm scared. What else is about to come out? Right. Because it's the, like, like you know, what I'm saying the tree is being shaken. The video's going to come out. There's more stuff that they're trying to obtain. I've seen, like, there's new. There's a, there's another video they're trying to obtain. There's you know, you know, he just just like how like how I just said, and how Rolling Stone just did. They went and interviewed a hunt a lot of people that used to work like over fifty. Yeah. And, and they I'm, asked over three hundred people. To yeah. Speak. So and a lot of people a lot of people did the same thing that people told me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A lot of people denied it just out of fear. Mm-hmm. Scared. Yeah. I yeah. mean that's another thing too. Like, bro, the nigga was moving like 007 talking about he got bombs on Kid Cuddy's car. Yeah. Kidnapping niggas dogs. Talking about they gonna behead him and it's like, what are you like, bro, mm-hmm. are you I'm, I mean, I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. All the people who are talking about, like, oh, I heard it, or I never seen it. I mean, the things that are publicly known is enough Mm -hmm. for you to believe it. One, I don't believe that a person that makes hungry artists walk the Brooklyn Bridge for a slice of cake is a good person. (laughs) And I know that might sound funny, but dead ass, though. Like, you're you're cruel. Yeah, that's cruel cruel shit. Like, you're... That's torture. Yeah, almost. So, I don't... One, I don't think that that person's a good person. Um... Two, Steve Stout sued him for assaulting him mm-hmm. with bottles in his office. Like, if you walling out like that, you would really do anything. Yeah, like, I didn't even know that. What the? Yeah, Steve Stout sued him. Um, 
maybe put that on the Patreon because you know my job. Mm. Uh, and um, and Wendy Williams Ben said it. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Wendy Williams Ben said it. Um, she got ran out of New York for you know a claiming that he was Clive Davis's boy toy. Mm. Listen, delete my articles on Revolt. It's all right. Damn, I did shut out that you wrote Revolt. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> you don't need that association on your jacket. <laughs> I'm so sorry. But um, yeah, it's yeah, I mean, and like <laughs> that was such a, I'm sorry. That was a lie. <laughs> like an Aubrey excuse from Dan Danity Kane. <laughs> like, excuse me? Um she's been, oh, alluding, she been on his neck. She's been alluding to stuff with him for years. She's I've, been seen, on I've, his seen, I've seen I've seen a little bit of that, yeah. And and even now she's like, I still haven't told my story. So oh, like, Jesus. That part. Mm -hmm. But the most craziest thing about like all the rumors too is Suge Knight accusing Diddy of being involved with both Tupac yeah. and Biggie's death. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, Suge Knight is a real street dude yeah. versus in comparison to Diddy who is trying to feel connected to the streets because of his family history yeah. and, you know, losing his father early. Like, he did not grow up in Harlem. He's one of those kids that left New York a long time ago and was just coming back and forth. So I do feel like, you know, Sometimes he had to maybe do more to kind of, like, supplement that or whatever the case is. And then plus, like, the rumor was that his dad was a snitch mm. or something like that. So, like, I could see him trying to, like, you know, just live up to that or be bigger than that. And um, I remember watching Netflix's I Got a Story to Tell. Mm -hmm. Like, when Biggie died, I was only one. So, like, certain um, celebs, like, Biggie, Pac, Selena, they're like majestic to me almost mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. I wasn't old enough to experience mm -hmm. them. Like I know it, know who they are from anecdotes and stuff like mm -hmm. that, but like I didn't experience it. And then when I watched that doc at the end, I was like in tears because I was just like, damn, Biggie, like they took you so soon. You didn't want the smoke. You had a lot of like um, dreams and hopes for your career, including being a businessman, which Rolling Stone just exposed and they're kind of alluding to like what we can predict. Yeah. Like they're trying to accuse Diddy for Biggie's death and yeah. they sound like they got proof. Yeah. I mean at this point can you rule it out? No. <clears throat> no. Miss Wallace never fucked with um, Diddy and even Suge Knight on his podcast his prison podcast he was yeah. like I didn't pick up a mic when Pac died, I picked up the pieces. Mm -hmm. And even that, even the um, former president of Bad Boy saying that Rolling Stone offered the cover for Biggie and Puff said, no, he's dead. I'm I'm releasing my debut. I need to be on the cover. And yeah. it was dead ass on the cover. Yeah, that's, that's pretty nuts too. And also the way he spoke about denying his publishing rights. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's looking nasty. It's it's deep. There's but, There's layers to all of this. Diddy gives death before dishonor vibes, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because his kids, it's a lot. Their mothers are involved. Like, it's it's a lot. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, so it's just been an overload of stories and commentary from 50 Cent and other people <laughs> within the culture. And Yo, he does so that not documentary to he Netflix. He did, he did. I don't want to beef with him ever. Yeah, no. F 50 <clears throat> is probably the greatest villain we have ever seen. What? Um, but um, yeah, so it's just been a wild time. It's honestly been like a bit of sensory overload. Like obviously at work, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We've, we've covered this a lot. Mm -hmm. I know. And Pray it's, to you. Yeah, it's, it's tough. <laughs> it, it's tough to so read what, I'm, what I have to read and just everything having to do with it. Um, but um, I mean... These things coming to light is important because these are people that people deify and people look up to and people, you know, rich and powerful people. They just seem like they can't fall. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that, you know, the higher you are, like they say, the higher you are, the harder you fall. And, uh, but we don't know. have to start from the top. Like Diddy's not the only one. Oh, absolutely not. You absolutely know, not. It's it's literally like embedded in the culture. So I don't even know what the solution is. But the the singling out is like, all right, who's next? We'll see. We shall see. Because, uh, you know, well, one thing that 
we've seen within the music industry or entertainment space is like when the focus is all on someone eventually people are like all right well who else like it just becomes a big witch hunt Mm -hmm. um which in this case is good because i think you know either these things need to be exposed so right freaky ass niggas and stay ass inside (laughs) (laughs) great way to sum that up um lastly Cardi B and her elusive sophomore album. So she had a tweet a couple weeks ago where she was like, I'm not dropping the album. I'm done. Uh, something about either ungrateful fans or whatever. And that, I think that was the day her cover story with um, was Rolling Stone dropped. The and then Atlantic Records tweets like, Cardi B's album this year is going to be fire. <laughs> We're just like, wait, wait. She just said she's not dropping one. Did Atlantic just big dog her and say she's dropping? But Basically. aside from that seeming miscommunication, it's, it's been six years since Invasion of Privacy. Cardi's been able to thrive. She's become a brand. Mm. You know, she's commercials and, you know, d- different deals and all that stuff. And she's been able to do her features. Her singles that she's dropped, most of them don't really hit, hit that, that crazy lately. But she's been on big features. And she's still a person that people care about. But I think it's a combination of things like, I think she is concerned about living up to her debut album, which was yep. massive. So many hits on that. Like songs that still play. I still hear Bodak Yellow out. If, if you're at a diverse function, you might hear uh, Grammy, I, I like it. Grammy you know? award winning. Diverse. Grammy award winning. It's Grammy like, award yeah. winning album. Yeah. You know, like I think every song is certified gold or platinum. I think she, I th- she definitely has a diamond record by now. I'm pretty sure. But, um, you know, I, I think there's the pressure of living up to her sophomore album i think um some people say like she doesn't need to ever drop an album again i don't necessarily i don't necessarily agree with that either but there's so many narratives surrounding it and i think just waiting this long is only making it worse for her um because it's just like as time moves on from invasion of privacy like i was in a group chat and people were asking they're like yo like is that actually a classic album like people are people are starting to historically revise in, in invasion of privacy because she gave us so much time away from it and i was like yo when i really think about it as much as i still hear bodak yellow and i like it i don't play any of those other songs like they're very much so of the moment and like in the moment i loved you know uh, Drip with Migos. I loved Bardier Cardi with 21 Savage. Mm-hmm. I loved Ring with Kehlani and Best Life, uh, Best Life with Chance. Like at the time, they all sounded fire. And then I, mm-hmm. I, I was looking through, 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 through the track list the other day and I was like, I don't have the desire to listen to these. Like they feel very 2018. They do. So, what are y'all feelings on Cardi B, this very elusive sophomore album that she's been talking up for years? Like, it's been done or she had three things left to do. I think that that was a quote she said in some interview. Um, and just the reality of like, did she miss her moment? Um, like, I, I feel like there's so many questions and the, the answers lead to more questions. Like it's, it's such an interesting case with her. With Cardi, like the beauty about the digital era is that, you don't ever really miss your moment. Mm-hmm. Like, look at Tanache right now with the nasty song. Like, you can always get another moment again. But I would say that the moment is no longer here. Mm. And that she does need to do something else outside of a feature run to kind of, like, you know, bring that moment and, like, research her rap mm-hmm. career. Mm-hmm. Um, Cardi mm-hmm. B is a big brand. Yeah. Um, you know, she's going to get the deals. She got the team that's going to advocate for her and get the things. She's super marketable. Mm. But, you know, that goes back to like everything Nikki was ranting about and everything that the purists say. It's like, where's the music, Mm -hmm. you know? And it's not like she writes all of her own stuff. So it's like the music, It I believe that she was almost done. I believe that it was maybe three more things left, but it's a lot of pressure on her to to put out an album that was as good or better than Invasion of Privacy. Um, I hate that. I, I feel like I've mentioned her so much to the point that people are going to be like, are you a Barb? <laughs> yes, I am. You are a Barb. <laughs> but um, what like Nicki just gang. did <laughs> with her last album, she kind of like... 
Like, she kind of proved it. Like, if your name not Onika, you're not a girl selling music. Mm. You selling your image. You mm. selling your brand. But you are not selling records. Mm -hmm. You not selling shows. You not selling. Yeah. Mm. So I do think it's a lot of pressure on her. There's other rap girls out. Um, in comparison to 2018, like it's a lot, but I do not want to hear that. Want to be remixed? I think Cardi needs a a, a lead single for yeah. for this album. I'm ready for her. I'm ready for her sophomore era. Mm -hmm. I'm ready for it. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy because I did like. Uh, I think it was a, a, enough. I, I liked enough, but that lasted a week and then it disappeared. Yeah. And then she had that freestyle like the week before, which didn't really have much motion. Like, I think her last single that had some motion was Up, but Up kind of tapered off pretty fast, and too. And the dance was really holding it, too. Uh, yeah. But I yeah, think yeah. that can also cause the delays. The fact that the singles aren't sticking. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Like, WAP would have been a perfect moment. Not but WAP. What? I never heard nobody say it like that. What is this WAP? Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> WAP, 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 WAP. WAP. I don't know. My bad. WAP, 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 WAP. My bad. Fuck them up. Like, <laughs> you caught that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. WAP. <laughs> wow, um, wow, that wow, would have wow. been a great moment, Fuck but I, I think just the type of artist she is dropping in a pandemic would have been very limiting mm -hmm. for her. So, um, but that that song was like pandemic hit, pandemic yeah. classic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it really took over, so that probably would have been a great moment, and they didn't they didn't jump on it. So, yeah, I don't know. It's just like she didn't capture that, and then Doja Cat rose up in twenty twenty one. My girl, SZA's the girl now. Summer Walker, people love her. Like I don't, I wouldn't put her on Cardi tier, but like she is someone who people are really invested in. She does good numbers, but I don't like when people compare singers and rappers that's just fine. because they're women. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. So valid. Yeah, no, no, completely right. So it's, it's on the rap and mm -hmm. Megan The Stallion came out. Yeah, and, Lotto's making yeah, waves. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. it's and, not just Cardi and Nicki. And Mega, Meg. It's tour sold pretty well. Like she sold out. She sold like, out. How she go on tour before Cardi she and bring Cardi out in her own city? Crazy. That's that's actually crazy. <laughs> I, I I didn't even think about that. Like, that's really crazy. Yeah, like <laughs> Meg brought you out in your own city at MSG. Yeah. Our favorite. Cardi's done a bunch of uh, festivals and appearances of other people's stuff, but to not have done her own tour after the success of Invasion of Privacy is pretty nuts. I got a controversial she, take. She got. Pregnant again after that, album, right? I was just about, <laughs> and sorry. that's the perfect segue into my controversial take that might have to be on the Patreon oh, too. Dear. Okay, I do think that she fell in love too early in her career. Mm -hmm. Real shit. And the Migos was at a at a time like their their legend status was already cemented when she got with him. Yeah. So she kind of like extended like offsets relevancy as a solo artist now because now we're like okay we moved on from Quavo to offset once they got together yeah. but I do feel like he was extremely and a little bit too influential in a lot of things particularly like the sound like when she started doing the Migos ad libs and stuff <laughs> like that I was yeah. like all right she amiga like <laughs> Okay, that's literally going on, on her here. second single, Barty and Cardi. She's, she's talking <laughs> about <laughs> Offset. She was talking about Offset in Barty and Cardi. Like you know, it was like I, it was too yeah. soon. Like Nikki says, she gave us the pink print, and y'all are not following it. Mm. Y'all not like Safari was her man, and we ain't even know. And he was there the whole time. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like I do feel like I mean I don't know the ins and outs of their relationship, but. I do feel like there was a lot of benefit in it for Absolutely. Offset to be aligned with Cardi yeah. and then, you know, put them babies in a... <laughs> and then, you know, um, emotionally, if mm -hmm. you are with a cheater, that shit will break you down. Some days you will not be able to get out of bed. There are a lot of things that would happen. Um, you know, I know her and her publicist went through a little rough patch all of a sudden, she was under quality control management. Yeah. And the New York bias in me is going to say this as well. Hip-hop is very centered around the South right now. And I think mm -hmm. a lot of Cardi's best sounds is her native New York sound. And that offset influence kind of helped with what we're hearing now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sorry. I love them as a couple. The yeah. kids are beautiful. 
love everything that they're doing, but I would love Cardi B to kind of get back on that like gangsta bitch vibe. <laughs> That's interesting because I've never I, I never thought of the relationship being a, a hindrance in any way. Like I, it, they were just a cool. That's what we do. That's why I'm single. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need to focus. <laughs> the fuck? I just want a house and shit. <laughs> but it was just cool to see a power couple, and like so early on, as she was really breaking through, like. Cardi and Migos. Like, it was just dope. Like, you got motorsport, which was controversial. <laughs> that's why we, <laughs> quite, that's why we at where we at <laughs> quite, today. <laughs> quite controversial, but she was on the quality control tapes. Clout you know, crazy, too. Clout was fire. Woo. Clout was amazing. I was at Powerhouse when they premiered that, that shit. Was I was that there. That song is nuts, Clout actually. Was, yeah, Clout the video was special. crazy, too. And Nicki's yeah. verse, that's one of my favorites. On motorsport. motorsport. Mm-hmm. It's a, good, it's a good verse. It's mm-hmm. a good verse. I haven't listened to that song in forever. It's, it feels very 2017. Like, it does. I haven't listened to that song forever. It does. But, but that, that was my shit back in the day, though. I do remember that was my shit Not back, back in the day. day. We old. Seven years. <laughs> it's been seven years. <laughs> Two presents ago. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, like, it's it's a really interesting case with her. I, I don't, you haven't gotten to speak on the Cardi thing. What, what, are, your, what are your feelings? Oh. <laughs> Not you put down the water. Yeah. She got some things coming up. She got some things coming up. Mm-hmm. Um, it's one of those insiders. <laughs> I mean, if you read the article, um, if you if you read the article, you know she um, we we played her about thirty beats. Mm. Cash Bay. Mm. Um, oh yes, I she that. she she you know she liked them a lot. Um, this might have to go on Patreon too because I don't know if I can be talking about this. For you. <laughs> okay. Um, but it's in the article, so you know it, it's that's already public. They say you play thirty beats. Um, I think she's dropping mm-hmm. this year. I think it might it might be like winter. It mm. might be like not winter, but like end like, of the year. Like in the year, like like November. Oh, she or needs like, to take advantage of this or like, summer. Or like or maybe or maybe or or it maybe it may be like back to school time. Like maybe like late August or September. I just don't think it's coming this summer. Mm. That song with Cash needs to come out this summer. I feel you. And needs, this is his summer and like back, piggybacking on my point with her and her New York native yeah, sound being sense. the best thing. Yeah. It makes sense. You're right. 100%. It needs to come out now. It, it's I, definitely the and it would be the thing to take Cash, it would, it would be mutually be- it just, beneficial. It, it would be, it would, it would be crazy. It would yes. be mutually it would be beneficial. Crazy. It would be crazy. It would, it would, it would break the city in half. Yes, like, on turned upness, not like, like, like divisiveness. This is like it would be the turned, culture needs. Yeah, it, it would like, key. it would like, it would be an explosion in the city. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, I can see that. I can see her maybe dropping a. I just don't know if a project's coming this summer. I can see a single, maybe, no, but a single at least to hold her over, promote. You know what? Yeah, you know what she. You know what car? You know what they should do, and a lot of people are doing this right now. Just do the waterfall method, you know, where mm-hmm. where you're dropping, where you're almost building out your project with these singles, how people yeah. do it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you're I dropping did. a single and then another single comes. And yeah. then when people go to that next single. It looks like an EP. It looks like it looks like a little baby EP. But yeah. all, it, all it is is just all your singles in one place. Yeah. Literally. And I think, I think, you know, if she did that, bro, if she did that for... If she had like four or five songs in that little that little run over over these three months of the summer, and mm-hmm. then come back with the album, sometime, yeah, like yeah, it would. That's be a calm perfect. rollout, right it there. Would be, it, yeah. it, it would it would actually be beneficial and nice yeah, to she, see and hear for she got two both sides. It was, yeah, it was enough, and it was like what. <laughs> Yeah, isn't she like on? She's like low key on a fake run right now with like with all these are these remixes. The, the, the songs haven't stuck. Yeah, they haven't stuck the at all. Haven't stuck at all. They haven't stuck at all, bro. Yeah, she even it's dropped scary. that one with Yay and Dirt. Oh, hot shit in twenty twenty two. That was that was hot shit. <laughs> that was, yeah, that bro. Was a, lot, a lot of them are shit. Not, not, uh, yeah, I, <laughs> like, I think I think I think yeah. I think I think what you I think what you said and I think uh, how it's not sticking and I think she probably noticed it. I think her team noticed it. I think she's, I think she's nervous and scared as fuck. Yeah, which and anybody it's a lot would of pressure be. On yeah, her. a lot of people. Bro, you dropped a, bro, you. She beat out Astral World for album of the she year. Astral World. She beat Victory Lap. Like, come she on, bro. Like, what are we talking? Like, she won Grammys Miller, for this Village bitch. Swimming Mac Miller. That shit yeah. was good. That shit was crazy. That's a, that's one of the greatest debut albums ever. Else too. Yeah. Like Cardi does have a lot of pressure on her. She knows and like. I know people tell her to um, ignore like the trolls online. It's, it's easier said than yeah. done. We're human beings. Going viral a few times showed me how annoying that is. So yeah. imagine Thanks, how much man. more 
she has people it. have like, no idea and, they don't. and and she's always people been no she's always felt like one of us she has always been one of us right and, and and then she became a star right and people loved her but naturally people turned and i think she's struggling with the reality of that like mm-hmm. I'm this Grammy winning Super Bowl commercial performing on the Super Bowl stage person and people are not fucking with me as much because I maybe don't feel as relatable to them or something. So I will say that if she didn't have all these brand partnerships and all the stuff that she's kind of doing outside of this, she would be dropping some goddamn music. She would have to. She would have like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, really have to like. But yeah, like That's the, the thing. fact she, she's that a very busy woman. The yeah. fact that her brand part, like her brand partnerships and what she's doing, is like insane. So insane. She's so paid up and like this yeah. and that, blah blah blah. Like the music is like, eh. yeah. And you know what? Quiet is kept. That's what. That's what happened. Spice. <laughs> oh, oh, that's, that's, that's that what's ain't happening. quiet. That's what's happening right <laughs> that now. That ain't quiet. This was hap- that's what's happening right now. Because bro. that give me the light. I was like, sister, Shh. are you serious? My sister in Christ. Are you serious? Come right on. Now? Like, like that's not even your like usual delivery. Like you yelling at us. Ass yeah. looking nice. Yeah. But yeah. I was like, yeah. I was like, oh, here, take it. it. <laughs> you need take a lighter. Fucking leash off. Shit. Here, take it. Throw, throw, throw a lighter at them. Like, yo, yeah. you need it that bad. But <laughs> but you know, My sister needs something. But like, Help honest, her. but honestly, but honestly, <laughs> but honestly, that's the conversation. That's what the that's what, not the conversation, but like that's the contrast. Between male artists and I feel like female artists or women oh, artists, yeah. the brand partnerships on on the women's side. Got the bag. If, if you if you can get if you can get it rolling for real, yeah, you can be you, you can be shit. good. Like so, so you sweetie. can be good. Sweetie. Sweetie. Like, you're doing fucking Super Bowl <laughs> commercials. You're doing this. Yeah. You're doing, bro. Like, are you serious? A part of um, Megan's Popeyes deal, she gets to open. I'm not sure how many, but at least one Popeyes franchise. Which means she does not have to drop music. That's like, amazing. Her pockets are set. Yes, that's like, amazing. For life, she gets to drop one. Yeah, that's fire. at least one. I think it's three, but I don't want to like oh, uh, misquote it. But yeah, it's at least one. Imagine franchise. that. Imagine she had, she had that Planet Fitness deal too. She got the Planet like, Fitness Nike. deal. Yeah, she got, she got her own Nike sportswear shit now. Yeah, and yeah. you know, <laughs> it's crazy. I, yo, I talk about this woman too much. <laughs> Nikki, <laughs> she's the one though. <laughs> she is. She's but um, I remember her Joe Budden interview um, when um, she was just talking about um, the Fendi deal mm-hmm. and just talking about her regrets of not being as business savvy in comparison to the new rap girls. Mm-hmm. Um, you know Nicki would have gotten hella deals, but mm-hmm. that's not what the culture was on at that time. And I do yeah. think that um, hip hop has been exploited beyond repair because now we're... we're um, talking about people who aren't selling music. Mm -hmm. So it's like, what are we talking about here? You know, um, and I do think like there needs to be a lot of music education programming because the kids who are consuming this don't have a reference of like what's good or like what there's, what it's supposed to be, you know? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Absolutely right. All all valid points. Great discussion. I know I'm right. That that, <laughs> <laughs> that 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 actually went like a lot deeper than I expected it to. But I, that's what we're here for. This is mm-hmm. what this is what we do on Stay Busy. We responsible in depth discussion. So that was our out of office segment. Um, we will obviously be having more timely discussions on things as they move forward. Um, but yeah, that is episode one. We are back. Very happy to have Miss Two Bs and Will here. Uh, I'd really enjoy these conversations, and I look forward to all of the greatness that we would achieve together um, over the course of this next season. So, for Will, for Miss Two Bs, for myself, as always, stay safe, stay humble, stay busy.